Hello there, YouTube. We are back with some of the crew here. I'm joined by Jarrell and TJ. And we are here with a video where, you know, we've already talked about like our initial reactions, but we did want to do a little bit of a deeper dive into some more collected thoughts about the ban list. Um, and more importantly, touch upon sort of our thoughts and feelings on how the meta is going to shape up after this ban list goes into implementation, which for those of you who don't know, will be August 31st. This is the first like restriction list, um, not like a choice restriction per se, because that was with like the Sun and Moon Tamers, or not Sun and, jeez, I was in Pokemon Land, uh, the Dusk and Dawn Tamers. <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's close enough. <laughs> yeah, um, but this is like the first time like a, like a true restriction list is going into effect both in JP and in English at the same time. So they're gonna be interesting and we do have a lot of exciting things to pop off with, you know, as the meta unfolds and as regional starts to come into play. So we did want to give our two cents on how the field may potentially shape up moving forward. And we also will be touching a little bit more upon some of the rules that are going to be updated because uh, we do have an official Bandai judge here with us in Jarrell. Oh, so let us know what you think <laughs> down in the comment section below. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy this video um, and let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, before we hop into it, you know, as always, if you like the content, you like what you're seeing, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate it. Um, and also hit that bell so you know when these videos go live. And lastly, check out our socials, which are linked down in the video description below. It has our Discord, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, so you can just kind of keep hitting us up there. If you're looking for deck lists, the Discord is the best place to find them. But enough jibber jabber from me. Let's talk about some of these cards here. So just going down the list here, right? I mean, I think we can loop these two in because uh, these are probably two of the biggest talking points, right? With promo Uko yeah. and promo Louie. You guys want to take it away? Yeah, I, uh, I've been, I've been cooking. I've been thinking. So, um, the first thing I, I want to say with this is a lot of people are saying like, you know, cause we even said this too, the choice restrict the Ukos maybe. Um, was like one idea. Um, some people were surprised to see Louis hit as well. Um, and I think that, uh, cause I was watching, I've, I've checked out like everybody else's impressions and whatnot, just try to like try and gather more like thoughts and everything mm -hmm. on it. Um, and the biggest thing I saw was from East shout out East, my, uh, fellow, uh, bald man. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he was saying that like, okay, so if, even if you restrict one of the Ukos, they just make up for those slots with extra Louis to basically like suit like basically like if you like if you if you were just restricted the promo Uko and not mm -hmm. Louis along with it, people would just run more of the Louis to make the BT16 Uko more effective. Mm -hmm. Um and so I think it makes sense to hit both. And I think it also makes sense to hit both in the sense too of like what we saw with like the Agu Rush and like yeah. Gabu Rush stuff. Yeah. Like rookie rush decks or it hits them for sure. He's also hit Nume as well um they slowed on the hybrid decks like these this these two cards being hit slow down the meta massively correct um correct. well I, I literally just said that to say that they hope should slow it down a turn at least yeah like yeah um you know we'll obviously see what happens if it really makes that big of a difference i i hope it will i think it will um and hopefully it makes well, room for other yeah, decks to I think, compete um i mean this is gonna go into the whole speed aspect of it right but the memory gain as well, as we've seen, particularly, yes. like you said, with these like Agu Gabu loops, uh, when you pair these two cars or particularly mm -hmm. Louie uh, with the BT6 mat and Ty, you are really just making that crazy. loop go insanely hard and it's get, it can get real, real crazy with it. And that's, and these decks typically don't run a lot of Uko. I know you can sprinkle them in if you want to, but you really are trying to get the most bang for your buck from your Agu and Gabu promotions. So even like these decks don't utilize the full Uko package, like both with the promo and the yeah. BT16 one, which again, I think is more of a case for Louie to be sort of paired in with the Ukoman. Um, and like you said, TJ, right? Obviously like decks like Nume and stuff get hit with both of these sort of restricted. So I think slowing the meta down a little bit will bring i think the game to a more equal playing field and we'll start to see more and more decks or at least variety topping like sort of like we did before the new may yeah. and magna x meta which i thought was really fun um because you could really 
depending on your day, you could really just make an impact with whatever deck you liked best. I think more recently, it's just been like, grind out Nume, and you'll probably get top eight if you can kind of draw the heat, right? Yeah, yeah, like Nume or, or, you know, just if you play fast enough, because that was, that was kind of the thing right now, where it's just the, the and like the game itself is already accelerating with other effects, like as is, these cards just made it even faster yeah. and it just was, not it was not to tough. take away the skill set of players who topped i don't want to come off that way but i think it's more of just like you go to a regional and you know that you're probably going to be facing a ton yeah, of new may and top 16 is probably going to be at least 50 60 percent new may yeah obviously that was the whole point pilot yeah like pilots gonna make the difference for for actually topping and such as, as well as luck is going to be tossed in there too but like uh, your chances of topping if you run a you know a tier one deck obviously you know they increase significantly yeah yeah but i think that's um, pretty much it for these two cards anything you want to add Jero? no i think you guys got most of it sure and they eat banda even says here like repeatedly combining effects that aren't once per turn such as bt6 matt <laughs> <laughs> the, they target matt not ty which not is ty, funny just matt. <laughs> they don't they don't target their pro tag they're just like no matt's the issue Typical Bandai. See, they know blue's an issue, but they they won't hurt them. They won't hurt them. Oh, or will they? Speaking of blue, uh, this was one <laughs> that um, a lot of people were surprised about. Let's just say. I mean, I won't call it the most like um, common choice or the most like called out for card, um, but a lot of people had a very sort of like, whoa, Hammer Spark. Why Hammer Spark? Um. Yeah. And I know we kind of share pretty similar sentiments to it, if you want to take it away, TJ. Sure. Um, so I think the big thing that a lot of people weren't aware of, unless you were like looking at like JP lists, mm -hmm. that Hammer Spark has been uh, cropping up a lot in um, Mirage and Imperial lists. And the biggest offender out of this is probably Ancient Guru lists. Yeah. Ancient Guru is a deck that was already doing better than Nume uh, in JP over the past like couple of months. Like, um, it's it's been topping for like very consistently um and hammer spark was a huge enabler for its plays mm -hmm. um it's also a very good card to choke your opponents and other blue decks were like you know what they basically remembered this card was good again and started running it and it was starting to just sort of like spread through the meta over there and i think um us getting listed at the same time is it is almost in a way bandai kind of saying like okay we're gonna cut this off a little bit early um, it also helps to slow down like the ancient Gabu Bond and ancient Gabu Mon like rush decks or whatever, you know, that like Louie already being hit slows down, but this also just helps further slow it. Um, a, a lot of the changes with this list, this is probably like, one of the best ban lists we've ever had, honestly, in my opinion. I think and so, yeah. I, I agree. It, it, I think all of the hits were actually solid. Like they're good hits that don't outright kill decks, but they basically put them, well, one might be pretty killed but they they basically put them in a position of like hey you need to you need to chill like the, yeah the game yeah, yeah. we got we let the game get way too fast let's try and slow it down a bit so the other decks that have a bit more of a dialogue they want to play they can communicate again um and then another thing to add on i think i agree with everything you said about hammer spark already um, but I think another thing to add on top of that would be its security effect, right? Which is oh, yeah. just to oh, lose yeah. to memory. <laughs> and with the resurgence of Digimon Emperor into the meta now with to combat exactly what Uko and Promo Louie were doing, I think we definitely saw like, especially like at locals, even more recently when I'm running my like Ancient Guru deck, like Digimon Emperor's out on play. They lose to memory. They swing in a security, hit a hammer spark. It's my turn. Like <laughs> that's four yeah. memory gone. Um, and that's, you know, blue is really the only reliable color that has access to hammer spark. That can um, steal memory. Correct. Correct. And yeah. pair that, like you said, with decks like Mirage that already steal memory during turns. Imperial that's already super memory efficient, where you just really need one Davis and Ken. And before you know it, even if you've choked them to one, they're sitting at three or four memory. Um, it's just absolutely nasty and it's such a generic yeah. card that it's just so easy to sprinkle into pretty much any blue deck that you want to. So I think the more I think about it, it makes sense. I definitely had this sort of gut visceral reaction of like, ha, huh? why you do that? Yeah. But the more I thought about it, the more we talked about it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's fair. It totally makes sense now. Mm-hmm. 
It's also uh, the only zero cost memory option that doesn't have a downside like blinding ray. You have to trash security, right? Gravity crush, you lose to it in the turn. Let's not talk about Jack Raid. Jack Raid doesn't count. <laughs> also, also true. That's true. Well, Jack Raid takes a little bit more prep, right? Like at least you had to like yeah, set up a little bit. Yeah, you have to have ten cards in trash. Exactly. And that's one memory per. So, right. Um, Th which can be crazy. Claim, but like, eh. yeah. But like, it, you know, this one was just flat out like, oh, I play this card, I'm gonna gain a memory, and there's no downside. Yeah. 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 That's a so, that's a really good point. The Lightning Ray and Graph Crush also don't have security effects. Also true. true. Yeah. And also very true. <laughs> so does green clearly we should go out of those two instead to have gain two memory on i think green green's and equivalent have like a been... memory gain like option no i, I think mean, the equivalent HPD, yeah yes. i was gonna say the equivalent was probably hpd sort of <laughs> black Which doesn't have anything true. black <laughs> is like nah you get nothing kid sorry <laughs> they get parabolic junk what do you mean <laughs> oh you know what <laughs> you know what you're right true. I... that's enough I hate the the worst part is, is you're right and I'm so angry about it. <laughs> zero cost options on No, it's uh parabolic junk is literally the it is the actual that's that was their idea of a, the like you know what let's give it to black now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so useless. Um but I think All that right. pretty much wraps it up for Hammer Spark. It's just you know yeah. particularly just also to help to, people understand. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also going to be, even with this hit, we're already looking at a meta, spoiler alert, that's probably going to be very blue heavy. So mm -hmm. I think Bondi just had to do something about that, you know, and I think Hammer yeah. Spark was your best way of trying to generically just sort of stun blue decks. No pun intended. Yeah. As best we could. Um, but yeah, moving on to the next card. Um, this is BT9's Awakening of the Golden Knight. So a very key component to armor vaccine. Um, I think yeah. I've seen a bit more conflicting opinions on this card on some Reddit posts and like YouTube videos where some people are like, you only really ran it out of two of, so like it didn't really matter. But a lot of people are like, well, vaccine armors didn't really need level fives because of this card. So now that yeah. you're restricted to one, like it makes the deck a little bit less efficient. I'm sort of siding with the latter. Like I still think this card was really, really busted for vaccine armors. Um, paired with another card that we'll talk about later, like it just was way too efficient for what it wanted to do. And I think yeah. hitting this card to one still gives you that opportunity, but also slows you down a couple notches, which I think is very fair. Yeah, I agree. I think... Um the the big thing with this right like vaccine armor was already a deck that was kind of dying just as the meta was progressing because so many decks just had ways to get around it mm -hmm. um but i think that this getting hit just further opens up the room for other like tier two decks to basically jump up and have a better chance because there's a lot of decks that like they can compete against those top decks but they couldn't compete against magna they mm -hmm. just couldn't get around it yeah um so you know this getting hit to one like while like even like it being down to a two of you know like is a thing um being further down to one on it basically just makes it like like you were saying like consistency hits so hard where you're to the point where, like you can't rely on that as a strategy you're gonna have to run more fives in vaccine armors if you want to still play that and even then vaccine armors has this other issue as well that we're gonna go over later and then on top of that all of that as well um most of the level fives that you run in yellow nowadays are usually ace cards especially for vaccine armor mm -hmm um which makes your stack a lot more vulnerable and there's a lot more risk to like what you build right. um and right. this also to to like to be said about blue base right like about like v armors mm -hmm. um people can't run like that promo flame dramat as much of anymore which you know what uh for all the people that dropped like 35 40 bucks on that card <laughs> you know thinking it was a safe bet and then all of a sudden this happened i'm sorry you, you know what you had you had a good run chief <laughs> um because you know if you want to use magnax reliably in v armors now you're gonna have to run magnamons you can't just run a bunch of armor forms and call it right, a day right right so um, that's another big thing yeah no i think that pretty much sums it up i think it just uh magna x i mean we don't need to keep going over it you know it's been beaten yeah. to a dead horse by now like it was a huge gatekeeper i think if we're looking for variety and sort of other decks to come in and potentially like other like like ancient guru right is one of the bigger decks of this format 
like it, it's really really good really strong but there are a lot of decks that can still keep up with it that like you said would struggle potentially against magna if you take magna yeah. out of the picture completely i think you kind of increase the variety of stuff that can be seen so mm -hmm. i think that's really about it i agree um, moving on to the next culprit bt15 oh. numiman x yep i mean this card was crazy man that like yeah, yeah. um so there's been a lot of kind of debate on whether this was the right card to hit for new may right a lot of people have thought about like oh well monza x should have been hit because that's the one that actually like wide boards it spits out another body right when it evos mm -hmm. um and it has like so much dp reduction you know shenanigans uh that it goes crazy um i think the big thing with hitting new may x it's i think it's smarter because it doesn't kill the deck but it hopefully slows it down because they don't they aren't able to um recycle their platinum new Mimon from trash Mm -hmm. right off the stack being deleted they can't play the platinum amount out and then go into shine like you go into ruin mode and then just like keep your opponent from playing the game like they can't just like right, keep right. doing that for free now they have to basically recycle this new may x specifically if they want to keep on trying to like recycle the same stack but they can't like do other weird shenanigans as, as uh consistently or as reliably it, like forces them to make an extra step yeah um it was also a consistency piece another big mm -hmm. thing too like um you have to keep in mind this wasn't the only hit to new may Yes. Getting Louis and Uko, like the promo Uko, th those are also big hits to Nume. Mm -hmm. So those in con conjunction with this will slow Nume down significantly. Where I think that it can probably still compete because it has all its Monzai's. It still has good Nume Mon um, cards. Um, and Valkase and the Edamon combo is still yeah. devastating. It still has lots of powerful tools. Um, it just can't just be as cheesy anymore. It has to kind of work for it a bit more now. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I think well said. I mean, I think you hit all the key points there. Um, and yeah, like, I think the big thing is that Nume has that Uko Louie hit that also, I think, they took into consideration when picking the, the other archetype card to hit because they didn't want to overdo it and just absolutely yeah. flush it down the toilet. They probably wanted to keep it still somewhat viable, but like you said, not too overpowered as it has been in recent months. And the the last little thing I'll say about it too is that I do think it, it completely kills off black or uh, sorry uh, purple base uh, new May because before yeah. you could run all the ukos with purple base and have lots of cycle but now that you don't have as many ukos to reliably do that you're probably gonna want to run a lot more um, well you could still run like purple rookies I guess with it but I don't know I feel like black base rookies would be more reliable for play cost like like for floodgating and being able to like, agree. card evo when you need like to like chikuris and uh yeah exactly and stuff. yeah for sure um okay i think that wraps it up for new may x uh the next card which oh yeah i'll let you take this one because i know he's <laughs> he's a boy sorry but bt14 <laughs> sorry, tk uh, i'm talking a lot i'm talking a lot i just right, have lots fine. of thoughts uh um he's got the most feeling yeah, I do have the most feeling. I love this <laughs> card so much. So this was a bummer. It makes sense. And I'm glad it was hit. I, let me... It's bittersweet, I should say. I mean, not glad is the right word, but yeah, I'm, no, it's I bittersweet. Mean, I, I'm right there with you. Because I, I got all the alt arts for this card, like, right out the gate. Like, I had just... I pulled everything, like, out of my case that I needed for this. And I've loved running this card for stuff. Um, Patamon's one of my favorite boys up there with, like, you know, Entmon and, and Doromon. Um, so, I this card was honestly really really smart from bandai to hit um i know some people were talking about it maybe being hit or whatnot i definitely was like not a believer of it initially until we like went over our last like our unrestriction video when we were talking about other cards to like because we basically the idea for that video came from we wanted to do another restriction video but then we realized it was the same as our old list pretty much except for this card was mm -hmm. tk um he was one that we added to it so he's just a tamer that you know he just constantly nets you more and more memory as the game goes on he is a two drop tamer basically um but the biggest things with him is that he does two things for yellow vaccine or just vaccine strategies in general be vaccine armor you know three great angels whatever um first things first is he sets up sets up security for patamon Mm -hmm. Now you no longer can do that. So in a way, this almost sort of nerfs Patamon a bit, right? Patamon yeah. can still do it. And I think Jarrell said it in the first impressions video, like Patamon can whiff and it feels bad when you whiff with Pata. Because 
usually when you people will probably choke you if they see you playing vex like yellow vaccine and then they'll you know you'll push up pad up praying for that free evo and some memory gain if you don't see it you're just like well i guess i'm gonna evo to a level four and pass turn and just feel bad about life <laughs> um, yeah yeah because the stack's probably gonna get cleared um but uh you know well doing that it also does the other like big thing of is actually kind of pseudo nerfs emissary right emissary while well, you can still do your really reduced evil cost and the east is the, like i watched East's video and east mentioned this as well um but basically he said um you know it it also nerfs emissary because now they have to run more tks and they don't have this reliable cheap tk that keeps getting more memory they either have to run more of the memory setter or run some other tk that's just like not as like this is best yeah. tk by far yeah right and so by hitting this card, while they've, you know, nerfed what it can do itself in decks, they've also nerfed those other two cards in a way that just slows down that entire strategy to the point where it doesn't kill it, but it makes it less consistent. And so hopefully that's less frustrating for people. And, you know, it's th this this card being hit also just probably completely kills uh, vaccine armor. I don't think I don't think we'll see that between that and awakening being hit. It's going to be. A, yeah, a I think if hill. there's going to be Magna X running around, it's the V armors variant. I think vaccine armors is just like you said, there's too much now to climb out of to really make it work. Maybe yeah, there's a mad a lad or, you know, a stand out there who will find a way to make it somewhat more reliable than what we're saying it is. But I, I just don't really have faith in it anymore. Um. And it's really sad for me too because I think Angels definitely takes a hit with this card being Gonzo too. Uh, maybe not yeah. as much as Vaccine Armors, but you know I think it, the, the Yellow Angel, like Angels and Yellow decks in general, will be will be sad to see TK go. Yeah, but it's also it was it's a necessary hit that it needed. So there, it's a strategy that was just too generically good that needed something to be hit in it. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, and I think he was the best pick. No, oh, yeah. Security manipulation as just sort of a game mechanic. I know it's not like an official one, but like being able to kind of manipulate what you're doing with security is just so strong. Yeah. And the yeah. fact that a lot of effects rely on cards being removed, added to security, like this card was just way too good for what it did. It lets you right. do all that plus proc memory gain and can up your consistency. It was just overall, like you said, like a very, very smart hit from Bandai. I think we both are just sad. Bittersweet. Bittersweet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're right. I gotta just play better. I got you know, <laughs> yeah. I'll make up for it. skill diff. That's that's really the issue. Skill diff easy. Can't run what I can't wait to run more EX6 TK and Kari, so that'll be so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anyways. but that does do it for the restricted cards. Now we will have one oh. survivor. Rising yeah. from the ashes. <laughs> the boy. The boy. He Starter deck Gobblemon. He back. What was his um, what was his attack in uh <laughs> what was Spa Oh man, what's his I'm trying to remember like the, the dub name for his attack. Oh was it blue was it blue blaster? Blue blaster, yes. Yeah. There's something like yeah. that. Blue blaster! <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Um, but I, I mean, he's back. I don't really have much else to say besides, you know, it's great to have another Gabu, but I don't think he really impacts the meta in any shape or form. He was a victim of Apocaly. Now that Apocaly is no longer running rampant and is also himself restricted, it makes sense to have Gabu come back out. Um, it's a generic card with a generic effect for pretty much you know a decent amount of purple decks being able to draw one and trash one is always a good mantra for purple but even then i think the stronger purple decks of this meta have their own in archetype rookies that either do the same thing if not better so he's really just like he's there he's not really you know as meta defining per se oh, so no, he's no, just, no, no. Huh? you don't understand uh oh i tied him on baby Tidamon oh has God. its consistent <laughs> means of trashing a card again. And not just once per suspension. You know, I'm, I'm just mm. I, I'm just saying mm. that that was honestly, that was my biggest reason. I was sad to see this guy go. I like purple guru. OK, sure. I mean, it was a bummer, whatever. But this card is so good in Tidamon <laughs> for being able to resolve your your turn effect. I was just like, oh, <laughs> chill now. You're going to put him back on the restriction list. 
That's crazy. <laughs> you killed my tier three deck. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I I will be I'll be interested to see what you cook up now with Tida. He's back. It's it's not much to cook with it. It's, I can put this <laughs> card back in. It's just another consistent rookie piece that I run with the other purple Gabu and, and then like call Labra and call it a day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Uh, uh, but that does it for the cards that we will be talking about at least immediately. Uh, we're going to delve into a, another section here. Um, we'll kind of bring Jarrell into the fold where we're going to be talking about rules. And oh, shit, is that time already? <laughs> is that time, Chief? It is that time. Hello. It's your, it's your oh, no. part of the video. <laughs> Anyway, ahead, for those that aren't aware, uh, we are getting a new rules change. Um, it was speculated to come around EX7, but I guess we're getting it earlier than expected because this is hitting the same time as the ban list. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm just going to rapid fire these. So the main ones that uh, I wanted to point out were um, there was one where if something died to rules processing, aka zero DP um, stuff used to not trigger simultaneously i think the common example of this so an example i have of this is uh this was asked in the bandai server um if you hit dex or if you hit a darugo with final shining burst and it evos into dex doru what happens first the um when digivolving or the on play um and under the rules that we currently had, the when digivolving would activate first because bef uh, before the on play, because effects triggered by a rule check were not considered as trigger triggering simultaneously with effects that um, basically happened prior to the rule check. Um, I know that probably doesn't make sense, but um, <laughs> yeah. So what what this uh, or what I meant were what that example is saying is essentially because Marcus was played during the resolution of, of the option, um, because the Daruga dies um, when it hits zero DP and then the it evolves into the Dex Daruga, it treated it as the Dex Daruga is the newest trigger. So the when did you evolve and activate first before Marcus is on play. With the new version of the rules, this does not happen. Both the on play and the when did you evolve happen at the same time. So the Marcus can, um, this is BT13 Marcus, by the way, can minus the DP on the Dex Daruga before it can activate its wind digivolving. So I see if that makes a little more sense. Yes. Um, the second thing is, um, uh, the, we finally got the update to what they are now calling the field in English. It's called the area in Japan. Um, but it's essentially the collective zone of the breeding area and the battle area. So now they're just calling it the field, which brings me to my next point that they're updating the overflow text, um, to just be a little bit more, um, better. coherent and uh, better. Um, this is getting an up there. This is they're They're starting to print out the new text in EX seven with the new Saber. You can see it on the new Saber Leomon that was revealed. in I think it was either the web comic or the, um, the novel for Digimon Liberator. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the new text of Overflow there. Um, the big one for all you Grace Nova and Machine Dramon players is um, each instance of removal is now considered to be its own process and interruptive effect can be activated once per process. So what this means is that when you have an instance of protection that isn't once per turn, like Machine Dramon Strip 2 or Grace Nova's, I think, which one is it? What the, I forgot what Grace Nova's protection is. Grace Nova's all turns where you strip two of the same level from your sources. Okay, so it's two of the same level. It's basically like um, the Greymon's like X thing, but... Yeah. Um, before, you could only activate that once per deletion, so the common one was EX5 Levia, where it targeted the highest level and the lowest level. When it targeted the highest level, you could activate the protection to interrupt it once, but then because you already used it during that same effect, you wouldn't be able to do it again. They're changing that so that now each instance of deletion is its own thing and you can activate the protection more than once. Yay. Finally, <laughs> as it should be. As it should be. Unless it's, of course, uh, it's once per turn. Yeah, for sure. Um, the next one is uh, when an opponent's dig Digimon attacks now triggers and activates during the your opponent's like one attacking timing. Before this wasn't the case, it would be um, your opponent's or 
basically when attacking effects trigger and activate first and then when an opponent's digimon attacks would trigger after that which didn't make sense at all so now they made it so that those trigger at the exact same time um turn player obviously takes priority before the opponent's effects mm -hmm. um and then the last big one is that um all of the name changes are now being eroded to rules text um and we can see this with uh, with what well, with one of the garamons i forget which one it is that has the rule text that treats it as numamon yeah um basically everything that has a rule um a chain a name change like um metal Where's... the promo metal Greymon alters mode mm -hmm. um before that used to be an effect and would you wouldn't be able to do it in breeding so you can like evil metal gray x over it um now you can because it's being eroded to be a rule box instead um we've already seen this with um the ex4 terrier mon assistant um if you look at the original printing versus like the judge promo printing um they updated it so it's a rule box but not everything's getting that but they're like basically um errata errating it without reprinting it yeah makes sense so. And that's nice. basically all of the major updates. Fair enough. Okay. Cool, cool. cool yeah. Deals. Um, so to wrap up this video, we are going to take like a very quick sort of like uh, Jarrell did with these rules, like very just quick rapid fire segment where, you know, we'll kind of go over some of the more maybe like top tier, net top tier, but like more popular, I guess is a better way to put it, decks that we're going to be seeing in BT17. Um, and onwards and talk about how some of the restrictions that we just talked about may affect how the ratios or how the decks are built. Um, yeah. Talk about, I think, talking about just how the meta kind of changes up in general, right? Like, what, what yeah. do we think we're going to see on top now with right. all these hits right. being done? Um, oh. Why don't you go ahead? Why don't you start? Okay. I think we probably uh, will be saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> in, in regards to cards like... Uko and Louis being hit. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of veins for like more Digimon Emperors to be run to stop like other like decks that still rely on those SR rookies with start of main phase effects. Um, so the rush decks can like rush decks basically have like a lot of different things they can sort of like spice in for that. Like I know um people are talking for like for like red base ancient running like promo Gilmon, the one that's like one attacking draw one. Mm -hmm. um to like try and make up for some stuff just to like make up for like, consistency running like a it's like a pseudo other like mucho mon almost um I, I, like basically i think we're gonna see people basically default to a lot of like old like consistency tech right or like generic options that are still like in play um i'm not really too sure what it what we'll see them run in regards to like swapping out for hammer spark mm -hmm. i don't know if there's anything that necessarily replaces it as much unless you could think of anything no, I haven't. Um, and in all honesty, I have been flirting with blue base again, um, mainly for, I think, just more consistent tamer play. And I think the memory that I lose from the Ukos and the Louis, while some people are like, well, it's just like, you know, maybe one, it's more like aggression. I think the memory gain that Louis and Uko gave also helped me feel more comfortable hard slamming my tamers. Now that I kind of have to rely on maybe like one or two memory having to play out those tamers or even just like, you know, I think past turn a lot with these, I almost want to revert back to the blue base, give it a try and see, you know, with yeah. the, with the strawbies, you know, having to just do the traditional, almost what red hybrid is liking to do right now, which is swing with your lower end, pop out a tamer on deletion. So you get a poke in and you get your tamer play out all in one turn. Um, for me, that's sort of my way of compensating for that sort of change in pace. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in terms of what could substitute for Hammer Spark, I mean, I've seen some people maybe float the idea of like the trainings and the scrambles. But again, I don't really love that idea. Um, I think you just aim for more pieces at that point, in all honesty, with yeah. that one card. And I think um, in regards to other decks too, right? Like Vaccine mm -hmm. Armors, Armor Vaccine... Um, I think there's room for like the old TK Kari from BT6 to be run, or not BT6, uh, BT9, mm -hmm. is it? BT9, yeah, the dual tamer, yeah. the one that gives you two if yeah. you're less than, yeah. 
Yeah, that one was always crazy, so I think there might be a world where that starts to creep up a bit more to have TK in name still. Yeah. Um, nothing really. The only thing I could think, so this was something that was weird to me, but like I was thinking about it, was that maybe we'll see armor texture run more in place of uh, Gold Awakening. I so people can that. like do their stuff with like Flame Dramons and then swap over to a Magnamon and then go Magna X. Sure, sure. Um, I can see that. Um, I think from like less of a vaccine standpoint to more of just like a yellow angels sort of perspective, you know, I could probably see people being pushed more towards the Kari focused theme, right? Or the Kari focused sure. package. Where, yeah, running more Kari focused stuff. Yeah, where you have like purple Kari, you have the, I think it's the BT, is it 15 or BT 16 Kari? The one that BT gives BT15, the one that gives like check minus one and stuff like that. It's also a memory setter. You can also yeah. use the old memory setter Kari that gives you a memory every time you recover one. Again, all yeah. less efficient than what the boy did, but I think still decent substitutes. Yeah, for sure. Um, man, I think that's I think that's the majority of that. And I, I, I think this is something that I wanted to bring up too. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I think that covers pretty much all the cards for like what could be replaced what we'll kind of see swap out you know we'll see more consistency pieces run we'll see other like rookies just sort of like take place of uko we'll see um certain options maybe get increased to just try and make up for it or certain like generic tamers to make up for other like counterplay in the meta um but what does this mean for decks that didn't really get touched right like yeah. you know hammer spark kind of touches imperial um and i think you mentioned this at the very beginning of the video but we're looking at potentially a meta that could be very blue focused right mm -hmm. like mirage kind of can still coast through this just fine um imperial know, I'm going back to him yeah i know you are imperial coasts through this totally fine i was a lot of concern about imperial being like a tier zero deck now because of all the hits um i'm not sure it'll be that bad because i think that i think a lot i think a lot of people get like trauma <laughs> like by certain things like i'm trauma against mirage from you but i'm aware that like it obviously does not always like occur like that like it does for to me when i'm playing against it um imperial is still very beatable there's still plenty of means of getting around imperial and like dealing with it um there's still lots of other strategies that hurt imperial and that force imperial players to have to play around you um you know there's enough protections like the source strip deep reductions to hold board and stuff like that ace cards are a huge factor for a lot of things mm -hmm. blockers redirects also still do a lot of work um you know all all these things that can contribute to still hurting that um obviously we'll see what happens uh we do know like you know over here in, in english we have ex7 on the horizon which doesn't really do too much to the meta so it'll be interesting to see if like zafaga or sendril do better or like any of the decks really just do better because of these hits mm -hmm. like maybe some decks have more time maybe ex7 becomes a more valuable set because of this and and in that same vein like even like bt18 which like admittedly really like purple hybrid and like mother control are the only things that like really like were kind of like good out of that everything else is just kind of like okay like even the new hybrid cards aren't used that much yeah, yeah. um you know this is kind of a future forward type idea but yeah so you know well, talking about I mean, meta though i think i don't know if you're about to say this or not but i mean dexter gora i think definitely right. thrives off of That's this what I was about where, to too. um i mean and you can probably speak more to this than I can um, as sort of like our expert on the channel for the deck. But I mean, giving the deck an extra maybe turn or two to really set up, um, I think really does a, a lot of good, you know, because it is a yeah. very, very powerful deck with a lot of tools at its arsenal to do both a lot of control and a lot of damage. Yeah, like if the meta slows down, Dexter Gora definitely uh, its presence and its tamer threat become way more oppressive. Um, I don't think it comes to a point where the deck we'll see it. The deck might shoot up to tier one now. Honestly, I'm not too mm -hmm. sure. Um, we'll just have to see how exactly how much slower the meta really is because of this. You know, because if if Nume's still able to whiteboard like crazy, it's only so much deck store can really do about it. Yeah. Um, like you know, just as like a specific example, but there's a there's a lot there's still a lot that we'll have to just see and i think that a lot of people are jumping to like conclusions already and i think that it's okay just to kind of chill you know see what happens see yeah. what people yeah. come up with and you know on top of that too like i said with these future sets coming out we're gonna we might see more value from some of these cards now that the game might slow down a little bit more which will be nice um 
And, you know, the, the, the I would say the one thing that I am a little bit worried about because they kind of hit all the wide board or like quick strategies to get around it is Shoto Mother or Mother Control. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see. I, it's, a lot of people were of the mind of, oh, it's a necessary evil because of everything else going on. Um, but because those all just got hit, is that going to be a problem now? Like, is that going to be an issue? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it'll, it'll be something that's kind of interesting to see. Yeah. But I think that that's all my thoughts, really. You know, let's just sure. Sure, like, <clears throat> let's just see what happens. I think that, you know, this just kind of opens the field for a lot of other slower decks to kind of maybe yeah. actually participate and, and play the game. I think it's going to be exciting because, I mean, the last time we saw something like this with our last restriction list, you know, we entered a meta where, you know, we didn't really have the same precedent as JP. I think here in like the North America, EU, Latin America side of things, we really could kind of shape it to what we will. And we saw a lot of evolution to the meta, right? Like at mm -hmm. first it was a lot of like Leviya, you know, and then Mirage oh, like started- Oh, 15 EX5 Right, Leviya was yeah. sort of like the big dog of the, of the set. And then you saw Mirage start to slowly come up after the first couple regionals. And then you then after Mirage started becoming more popular, you saw like more counters to Mirage, and then other decks started to creep in. And then by the end of the meta, like regionals, you pretty much had like a deck from each archetype, like in the top 16, which is really, really cool to see. Um, so yeah. I'm wondering, you know, with how I think the different play styles and the different sort of expression that some of our players have here, and you know, in EU and in Latin America, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how we cook and how different decks are going to come up to you know come up to bat yeah i agree um but yeah i think that'll pretty much wrap up our thoughts for this video um <laughs> jarell do you have anything to add before we we close up shop i'm scared <laughs> 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 no, I think, I think I think my only thing is like our meta was already different because we're not getting the scrambles on time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's and now that we're getting thing. this at the same time, like we're getting this like vastly earlier than JP. So like, this is definitely going to be interesting. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I'm scared. Um, but maybe scared. You'll be <laughs> you'll be you'll be cooking later. Who knows? Your villain arc may come to fruition. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Give me, give me the adjustment support, and then we can call it a villain arc. Oh God, now I'm scared. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you all for tuning in. As always, we really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us of late. Um, like I said before, let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Feel free to hit that like and subscribe button, and hopefully, we catch you on that flippy flip. Bye bye. Bye. Uh.